So here we have example two. It says find the power series for the function centered at C and determine the interval of convergence. So here the C is equal to zero, so we don't have to have anything next to it. So we are looking for A over one minus X. We just want it to be in that particular form, okay? Now, you already have, um, you already have a problem almost there, okay? Um, and actually it is pretty much there. The only thing is, is you have a constant multiplier on it okay so in this particular case you could say that your a is equal to 4 and your um, because this does still have the same center it just has an extra coefficient here in the front so we end up with a and then we end up with 7 x to the power n so this one really didn't require a whole lot of manipulation because the center was equal to zero. But we know that this will only converge when that radius 7x is less than one. Now remember, we're talking about centered at zero. So when you're doing this, what you should be looking for is just your x and then your r. But right now I have this 7 attached to it. Well, you can rewrite this as 7 times x. And you can write this as 7 times the absolute value of x. Which is just 7 times the absolute value of x. And then divide by 7. And now I have x minus 0 and my radius here. So my radius in this case is equal to 1 7th. And if I were doing the interval of convergence, um, my interval would be from negative one-seventh to one-seventh. And if you want to know for sure that the ends are going to be open, think about what happens. When I plug in negative one-seventh, all I'm going to get is a negative one to the power n. If I do the nth term test of that, it will diverge. If I plug in one-seventh, the sevens will cancel. I'll get one to the power n, which is always one. So the series is just four. And the limit of that, or I'm sorry, the sum of that is infinity, which also means that this guy will diverge. So the ends are not going to be included in this particular interval either. Now, example three says find a power series for the function and this time it's centered at c okay so again you want to do one over one minus x right your radius here so what i'm going to first do is i'm going to take this function and i'm going to rewrite it as negative five plus three x then negative five minus a negative three x And then a negative 5 minus negative 3 and x. And again, if I want the center of 2, that means I need to have negative 5 minus negative 3 x minus 2 and a plus 2. Right? You have to do it and then undo it so that it stays equivalent to your previous line. Then I'm going to kick out the plus 2, so I get negative, negative 3, positive 2, which makes it a positive 6, which makes that negative 5 in the front a positive 1. So unfortunately, like in the previous problem, you do still have a constant multiplier there. So in this case, your a is equal to 6 and your r is equal to negative 3 times x minus 2. Okay. So if I write the series, I'm going to have 6 and then um, in a bracket, negative 3 times x minus 2 to the power n. 
Now, what that means is that this series converges when that radius is less than one. So again, like before, you can split this up into negative three times the absolute value of x minus two. Well, the absolute value of negative three is three. And then you can divide by three on both sides and you get that your radius is equal to one third. Now be careful here because your center is at two now, right? So if I add one third, I get two and a third, which is the same as seven thirds. And if I minus a third, I get one and two thirds, which is the same as five thirds, okay? So your interval will actually be five thirds and seven thirds. And again, you can test. If you plug the one third into this problem here, what you're going to end up with is, let's see. If I plug in one third for x, I'm gonna have one third minus two times negative three. So I'm gonna have six and then five to the nth power. If I do the nth power, the nth term test, and I take the limit as six, five to the power n, I'm just gonna put an x, as that goes to infinity, this whole expression goes to infinity, which is not zero, so that it will diverge there, okay? And actually, I'm plugging in the wrong number. I should be plugging in five halves. So five halves, or five thirds, I'm sorry, minus two times negative three. I get one. So you have six to the power of one. If you take the limit as n goes to infinity of that, you get um, six and that's not equal to zero, so it diverges. Now if I do seven thirds minus two and then multiply it, oops, multiply it by negative three, I get negative one. So you get six, negative one raised to the power n. Again, if you do the nth term test, um, as this goes to infinity, this toggles back between one and negative one, but in either case, you get six or negative six, not zero. So if the limit is not zero, then it diverges, which means the seven thirds should not have a bracket on it either, okay? So this is your radius and this is your interval of convergence. And that is the end of 9.9. .9.